Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Oakenfold. Uh, this is a strategy game that, um, I mean, I'm not going to mince words. This is, this is an Into the Breach alike. This person played Into the Breach and liked it a lot and wanted to make a thing that is like it. And frankly, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that because Into the Breach is amazing. And the underlying formula is really not that complicated. That's not to say that getting it right as a game is not complicated, but like, I don't know, it seems like an easy thing to try to make your own version of, to put your own spin on. Uh, and that is what this is. So the basic storyline here is, we play this woman, Asha, who is sent to gather the last batch of fuel needed for the living ship, the Oakenfold, to blast off and leave Earth behind because we destroyed it. Because extractive resource strategies, etc. Uh, not only did we make the planet unlivable, but we also triggered its immune system, we pissed off the crazy bio monsters living deep within the earth, and now they are after us. And solving the problem seems difficult, we're just gonna go. It's just, it seems like the right thing to do here is to just leave the party. So let's see if we can figure that out. Uh, we have three choices of mindset here, and basically these are, these are our ability sets. So you can see here, um, I don't know what they all do. Let's just do this. Let's just do the leftmost one, the most default of them. So we have a, a power glove for punching, a hook for pulling enemies toward us, and a grenade that does some damage and pushes enemies away. Uh, Asha learned her flexible survival skills from her father, a hardened practical man. She took after him, preferring practicality over flashiness. Perhaps not my usual vibe, but we'll see if we can make it work. I'm just going to leave it on normal here while we're still kind of learning to play. So I watched the tutorial. Um, there's there's a couple of short tutorial videos on YouTube. I played like the first two locations of a run. I have an idea of what, what is going on here. So we get to pick one of these locations to start at. I am curious about this, this location. Also plant. That just says plant. I want to see the plant. We're starting here. We are to understand there are two waves of enemies. All right. So, first things first. Up here, we have the Time Scrubber. Trademark. Pa patent pending. Uh, the Time Scrubber is the tracker of how many actions we can use during battle, uh, or use during a turn. We can always just rewind time uh, if, if I ever do something and I don't like the way it goes the game seems to be completely deterministic um, just like uh, just like into the breach so we can't there's nothing there's no randomness to like try to cheat or anything with this uh, we can see the enemies have broadcast their intentions here that one's gonna destroy some of our supply crates that one's gonna kill our crafting station which we do care uh, care about quite a bit so I think let's go solve that. And these tiles over here are where the new enemies are going to try to spawn. And yes, just like Into the Breach, we can just block these. Now you'll notice the Time Scrubber is broken into two chunks. That's because there's this moment here in the middle where our, um, our cooldowns refresh. So we can uh, use any of our abilities up to twice per turn. We can also just to bank any unused actions. They'll go into our time bank here where they become a resource that we can spend to build things in the crafting table. So like, maybe, maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I don't want to run up. My plan was to run up there and punch that thing, but I'm starting to wonder if maybe I'm better off just throwing a grenade at it here. We're going to have to move it twice to, um, to prevent it from being a huge problem. I guess I'm going to trigger my... Running up there and then punching it was not actually that much different because we're going to hit the uh, the reset no matter what. And I certainly don't want to throw a grenade here to push it. I don't know. The grenade doesn't do damage on the adjacent tiles. It just pushes the adjacent tiles. Never mind. Throwing a grenade right here is a great idea. How am I going to deal with you, though? This should be fine. So I'm going to step to right here, and then I think what we want to do is let our um, 
cooldown come back off. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dump two actions into the old time bank. Just dro drop a couple seconds of actual human time, and you can see here the abilities have very into the breach uh, style videos of how they work, which I really appreciate. We're just gonna drop a grenade right here. We can run over here, leave ourselves just enough action to throw a nice big punch. So now, now we just need to figure out how am I going to protect everything. I mean, I don't know that I need to. Oh no, never mind. This is this is the dilithium. We have it already. We just have to get out of here with it. Hmm. Well, if we just run up here, throw that grenade. Can I hook at this distance? Yeah, range two to three. Is it going to damage my crate to do so? It doesn't look like it. And even if it did, we could just rewind time. Okay. So the body, the body went to pieces before it became an issue. All right. So enemies leave these orbs behind when you kill them. Uh, gaseous dilithium. We can pick this up. Uh, to turn it into a crafting resource. If an enemy touches a dilithium orb, they get healed. I don't know how much for. It might it might be a full heal, it might not. Uh, I don't expect it matters terribly. The important thing is, don't let them do that. And then I'm gonna hit you with the hook. No, never mind. I'm gonna, uh... I'm gonna go back to here. Sorry, don't just waste your actions bank stuff when you don't need to spend it because it actually matters. Okay. I do think it's strange that the timer is in number of waves rather than number of turns. Not sure why it's implemented like that. So do we want to see the plant or do we want to go through this uh, protect mission to meet a friendly robo? I, I'm very curious what plant means. I mean, like, I know what a plant is, obviously, but in, in game terms. <laughs> All right, so we got some bonus objectives, which will reward us potentially energy and also time. So there are these fortifying plants. Okay. Well... So I want to come down here and pull Tiny, so the Tiny will do damage. Um, it's not clear to me how much damage. Like, there's no number here, and I'm pressing Alt and Control and stuff, and they do not... Yeah, there's a question mark over the mouse cursor, but no controls pop any additional information, as far as I can tell. Because these things have armor on them. So I'm not 100% sure he's going to do damage, actually. Well, I guess we'll find out. So you I can just punch to pieces. I don't need all of my actions here. I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I'm going to block this thing. Uh, yep, we can use the crafting station, but I know that I don't have enough resources for that to be good. Armored units prevent one damage, just like in Into the Breach. Okay, the UI is telling us this will still be a kill. I really do wish it would just show us the number, though. So, we can craft items. Crafting always costs six seconds from your time bank, but it also costs some amount of energy depending on what you um, on what you want to craft. And once you've crafted an item, it stays with you even through time movement, which means you can, at the beginning of a turn, run over to your craft bank, make whatever you want, and then go back and effectively not have ever spent the time to run over, which is cool. Um, obviously, we're quite far from being able to do any real crafting here. I think this is maybe a good moment to just bank again. Okay, so obviously I want to do the same thing on this guy. 
Oh, the fortifying plant will fortify us as well. It does not seem to have a much in the way of loyalty. So I'm not going to be able to get down there. I think what we're going to have to do is throw a grenade onto this rock. Oh, you have to be further away for that. Range three to four. Interesting. Well, I can't do that, obviously, because of the position of these crates. Let me, let me rewind here. It takes us all of our actions to get over there. I was going to say, if we, if we can get over here in, f if we could get to this space in five steps, then we could just hook the thing twice. Since we can't do that, I think it may be safe. It may, it may just get away with this. Yeah, I don't... Okay, we're allowed to lose six. We better score if we don't lose anything. But we, we can afford to dump some. I think that's what's happening. This this part is totally right. Uh, and then we are leaving the guidance systems in place. I can't make it back to a spawn or anything, so... I don't know if I want to bank everything. We already have a lot of seconds. The thing that we're short on... Um, as far as, as far as crafting resources go is the energy, which we had to get kills to get more of. So we can step over here and just like throw a grenade on top of this guy. I don't, is the plant movable? No. Okay. That's kind of what I was hoping. Oh, right. Throwing the grenade doesn't do anything. Armored. Uh, in that case... Rewind. I will throw a grenade on you. Nope, still can't do that. I will throw a hook on you. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the there is still there is still into the breach style collision damage. Well, I would rather do this right than let it destroy something on its own, because that way at least we're rid of this enemy. Yep, if the bar reaches zero, you lose the game. Got it. And then I don't think I am going to bank time. I think I'm going to spend the rest of my cycles to run over here so that we're in better position to deal with the enemies who are teleporting in. Okay, well, grenade here seems pretty solid. Does this work? We run here, we spend one, two, hook the bug to there, and then one, two, three, four, five. I think, I think we have exactly enough actions to make all these enemies not do any damage. I can't kill any of them. All right, so it feels like objectives that pay out energy are kind of a big deal. Energy seems a little hard to come by. We really don't do very much damage. Let's see what's going on at location. They want me to end the battle at one health. Okay, the payouts for these things are not spectacular. We probably don't have to be too stressed about that. So, if I run to like here, and we throw a grenade. Oh, sorry, I gotta run one more space. Throw a grenade, we can get some push damage, and then maybe just like bank bank to get my grenade back and finish them off that way. Because if we had run up and punched this guy, his corpse would have disintegrated before giving us the push damage. Uh, when you can't do anything useful anymore, you can, yep, store stuff in the time bank. materials, you know? Stuff's important. Alright, let's have a look here. Oh, interesting. We don't have the same crafting options we did last time. Enemy units picking up energy orbs no longer heal. 
does not prevent them from becoming elite. I didn't even know that was a thing that happened. Uh, dash, the upgraded ability can now perform a short dash to be cast from further away, or it does bonus damage. Honestly, I think movement, a little bit of extra movement seems relevant to me. Let's, let's pick this up. An upgrade permanently modifies one of your abilities. Crafting an upgrade cannot be undone. It will come with you when you reverse time. Uh, and that seems like a thing that's worth doing, I think. I mean, probably just once, right? So I moved to here and then... Yeah, this was only one energy. I'm not I'm not too stressed about that. Ooh. That's a new kind of critter. Okay, it's a beetle. I understand beetles. How much uh, I really wish they would report how much damage they do. Okay, a considerable amount it turns out. Let's let's maybe not allow that. Uh, whenever you are in crisis and need to teleport out, you can hit the quick escape button, uh, which costs some amount of time bank. Okay, like a pretty serious amount of time bank. So we're saving up, um, saving up skips, essentially. It is a Jugum's Cloud. I think I'm cool to just bank, bank, and then punch the hell out of this guy. Oh, I didn't grab the energy. Do we get credited? Nope, you do actually have to touch it. Well, you know, that was good to learn. We got a sandworm that we are apparently supposed to destroy. So there are some landmines. The enemies apparently did not, uh, did not fully take that into account. Uh-oh. Yeah, the sandworm is uh, is for sure coming this way, huh? This visual marker shows the attack slash acting order of the uh, enemy and neutral units. All right, well, the good news is there's only one, um, only one mine left. Wind turbine allowing you to push enemies in a straight line away from you. That's certainly interesting. Ooh. Yeah, I actually would really like more versatility with the grenade. That sounds great. And we're only allowed to use the crafting station once per battle, so. Uh, if you end three actions on top of the sandworm, he will instantly kill you. You can lure the sandworm out by displacing enemies or neutrals on top of him. Okay. I was kind of hoping that's what I was going to do there. It's just that he moved at the same time that I did the thing. Well, I mean, I sort of did it. Kind of. fun. He did eat my crafting bench. That's probably bad. Don't you burrow. Don't do it. I want to punch you so bad. Oh, cowardice. All right, so we got to get him to we got to get him to surface again. Uh, 
I don't know that I'm going to be able to. I'm trying to think of how would I have to position to make that happen. Obviously, I don't want to throw a grenade on this crate. So we just get four time bank seconds for destroying all the mines. Not really that big of a deal. Destroying the sandworm would be awesome. I just have to figure out how. Okay, so now I'm not, I'm not going to be able to kill this thing without spending a punch on it, which I can't even do at this point. Okay, and that's, that doesn't work because he is never actually on top of the sandworm. Yeah, this none of this quite worked. Shoot. One more action. Sandworm's tough. All right. Let's see what a boss battle looks like in this game. So, first of all, we got a robo fixer. Prevent all right arm damage, prevent all left arm damage. Um do I not need to uh do those to, to do damage? I guess not. How are we gonna do this? These things are um they are pretty awkwardly positioned. This I don't care about so much. This is going to destroy... Maybe prevent the damage dealt by the right and left arms? Maybe that's what is meant? Maybe. So we're just going to have to kill a couple of these enemies. Uh... Do we know what the order of their actions is? So we can let that happen. We still, we're not gonna lose this box because this guy will die instead of getting pushed into it. Which is a thing I am adjusting to, because that is different from how it works in Into the Breach. Yeah, and I can't really do any damage to you. So... I guess I just hit end. So you'll notice there are some ways in which this game is not like a big part of why Into the Breach works the way it does is because it is so forthcoming with information. You know everything about everything on the battlefield. Uh, this game is already not doing that as well with stuff like not reporting how much damage an attack does. So like mousing over this enemy, you can't tell if its attack does one or two or three or 12 damage. Could be a problem sometimes. Obviously, we have the context clues to, to get a number, but shouldn't have to be that way. I'm going to assume I can't, like, yeah, I can't move this thing in a productive way. 
So I think we just have to accept the loss of that crate. Okay, I see. It was like, this icon tells you how the enemies are going to act. And I was like, I don't, that doesn't make any sense. Like, all of them have the little thing around them. But what it meant was the order that that thing moves along the battlefield. So enemy, enemy um, turns are position based. It's a pretty weird way to do that, actually. Hmm. Well, it's not too hard to just like pull this guy. Yeah, that works, right? And then I have the resources necessary to throw a punch here. That doesn't actually solve anything. Hold on. Uh, so I need to spend both of my punches doing this, I think. Okay, no, doing any actual damage removes the, the hand entirely. Okay, that's good to know. I stick by this. Step over here. Okay. Pushing still works the way it does in Into the Breach, which is nice. So I think we do that, and then I can um, safely just punch this guy to death. And I guess we do it here. I'm going to not be standing there at the end of the turn, but yeah, that seems fine. Just bank the rest of these seconds. Dude, I'm desperately trying to rebuild that crafting bench. Alright. Uh. This one seems very straightforward. And then I don't think I even want to kill this one. Yeah, I kind of think we just let it do its thing. So I can run up to here and just do damage to do damage. Okay, that doesn't come down, which is a little bit surprising. If we put this thing next to the boss, uh, I have time to go grab that and still be able to issue the lethal punch. Oh shoot, right. I'm so I'm still so into the breach brained. In into the breach, a thing's corpse does still deal damage as it's pushed around. Okay. Having played a game that is similar to this actually causes a huge amount of problems. It's just different enough. Alright, well, I'll tell you what. That was half an hour. I don't think I am going to start another run here. That was our first foray into Oakenfold, and I got completely wrecked. When you come back next time tomorrow, we're going to take the information we gained there, and we're going to turn it into something. Somebody told me once that failure is instructive. It certainly can be if you let it be. So come back next time to see that process occur, fingers crossed. <laughs> and we'll see you then.